north with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high of silver, the Lone Ranger. Forceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Hold oh, Silver, let's go, Are you Silver? Buck Adams had just heard the gates of territorial prison close behind him, and he stood a moment enjoying his newfound freedom. After two long years, he planned to join his wife and son who were living in Laredo. The prison was several miles from Laredo. Buck mounted the horse he found waiting outside and set out for the town. After riding a couple of miles, he saw a boy on a white horse riding at an easy pace just ahead of him. Get up there. Come on. It was Dan Reed, nephew of the Lone Ranger. As Buck caught up to Dan, he rode alongside oh, and oh. spoke. Hi there, son. Kind of young to be traveling around alone, aren't you? I'm staying with friends that far from here. I see. Say, uh, you look just about the age of my boy when I... Well, when I went away. Have you been away from home long? Two years. I imagine he's kind of husky by now. Bob is always big for his age. Is your home in Laredo, sir? My wife and boy moved there a couple of years ago from Eagle Pass. Well, maybe you know my boy, Bob Adams. Bob Adams? You mean he's your son? Yep. You talk as though you do know him. No. Well, that is, I've heard of him, but I've never met him, Mr. Adams. Oh, I see. You seem like a nice young fella. What's your name? Oh, I'm Dan Reed, sir. Dan Reed, huh? Well, maybe if you're going to be around, Loretta, you can meet Bob. I reckon you two would get along well as friends. But well, maybe so. I want Bob to mix with nice folks, Dan. Uh, tell me, did you ever hear anyone mention anything about Bob's father? Uh, about me? No. No, I didn't, Mr. Adams. <clears throat> well, son, I'm going to tell you something. I reckon a person has to talk out to somebody at times. You see, Dan, I made a mistake a couple of years ago. I got mixed up with the law. Oh, I was buying a small ranch. I managed to keep up the payments on it, but I was kind of short of money to keep things going. I see. Well, on the property, there was a small box canyon near the West Range. I used to stop in at the cafe in town rather often. I got to know a good-natured type of Mexican fella. One night, Carlos, that was his name, Carlos, came into the cafe and sat down at the table where I was sitting alone. Good evening, Senor Adams. You object 
perhaps, if I sit with you? Oh, howdy, Carlos. You know, I'm glad to have you. I have here you are in need of cash, senor. <laughs> That's no secret around here, Carlos. Perhaps you are willing to make some what you call easy money, no? Ah, uh, wait a minute, Carlos. It's what are you driving at? <laughs> oh, he's nothing to be upset about, senor. This is what I mean. My brother has a ranch north of Eagle Pass. He is bringing cattle down this way to sell. Go on. Pretty simple, senor. The buyer, who is from across the river in Piedras Negras, cannot come to see about them until the end of the week. Mm. Just where do I come in? The Box Canyon on your place. We shall be glad to pay you a good price to let us keep the cattle there for a few days. And we shall pay more if you will agree to guard them at night for us. What well, if that's all it is, I'll be glad to do it. Uh, provided it's worth my while. We shall pay you $100 for the use of the box canyon and for your services for just a few nights. Fine, it's a deal. Oh, uh, when will the cattle be brought in, Carlos? Tomorrow night, senor. Sometime during the night. You need not bother watching them until the following night. All right, Carlos, drive me to the box canyon. I'll go out there tomorrow night. Like you said, that's your way to make easy money, Carlos. Well, Dan, I went out the night I was supposed to. I camped down in the canyon near the cattle. And Carlos, with some others who were there with him, went away. Why couldn't one of those men stay and watch the cattle? I wondered about that, too. But I was getting paid, so I didn't ask any questions. Toward morning, a posse rode into the canyon. The sheriff said the cattle were stolen and took me to jail. I went to prison for rustling. They wouldn't believe what I told them, but Carlos and his men got away. Gosh, that was awful. I saw that I'd been a loco fool and had to make the best of it. For a while, I was bitter about Carlos Mendoz getting me in such a spot, but I got over it. Carlos Mendoz? Well, I've heard of him. He's the leader of an outlaw gang that's being hunted by the law right now. And he's still on the loose, huh? Yes, sir, he is. Well, I hope they catch him, given what's coming to him. He sure messed up my life. Yes, he did. Yeah. But I'll just take up where I left off with my wife and boy. Some of us have to learn our lessons the hard way, son. It'll teach me not to look for easy ways to make money. Oh, uh, once I'm settled at our place near Laredo, Dan, come out and meet my wife and boy. For their sake, I'm bearing no grudges. And I'm really going to make up for lost time. After reaching a branch trail where he turned off, Dan rode to the camp where the Lone Ranger and Toto were waiting. Dan told the story he had heard from Buck Adams. When he finished, the Lone Ranger said, Dan, you didn't let him know what we have heard about Bob, that he joined Carlos Mendoz's gang? No, sir. I... I just didn't have the heart to tell him. I know how you felt, Dan. Well, him find out when him get home. I feel sorry for him. He was so happy about getting back home, and well, he talked about his wife and about Bob most of the trip. I heard Buck Adams was in prison for rustling. Isn't that right? The son couldn't get work because of his father, so he finally ran away and joined Mendoz. Golly. Mendoz and his gang are a menace to this territory. We've come down here to help capture them. It will be a blow to Buck if what he told Dan is really true to find out about his son. Yes, it will. I believe what he told me. Well, he'd have no reason to tell a mere boy like you such a story if it weren't true, Dan. And that's what me think. If we succeed in running down Mendoz and his gang, it may mean that Adams will be cleared of the charge of sending to prison. But it will also mean disgrace for his son. <laughs> Buck Adams arrived at the small farmhouse where his wife Mary was living, just beyond the edge of town. Mary, Mary, honey. Oh, gosh, it's good to see you. And you're prettier than ever, too. Buck, it's been so long waiting for you to come home. I know, I know, honey. But the longest two years I ever spent. Uh, where's Bob? I'm sure anxious to get a look at him. Why, he... He isn't here, Bob. Isn't here? What do you mean? He... Oh, 
Buck, the poor boy, went through so much in town. Nobody would have anything to do with him, so... Well, he left home two months ago. So that's it. Folks look down on him because of me. Yes. Yes, Buck, they did. Oh, Bob took as much as he could, then he... Well, he left one night. When I got up the next morning, I found a note. A note? Let me see it, please. All right, I'll get it. Here it is. I, I just hate to show it to you, but you have a right to know. Dear Mom, I took as much as I could from people about Dad being a rustler and jailbird. <laughs> Knowing that Dad was innocent isn't enough. Since they say he used to run with the Mendes gang, I've decided to find that gang and join up. Oh. Don't worry, Mom. Maybe someday things will turn out all right. Love, Bob. Oh, I'm so sorry I had to let you know, Bob. So Carlos Mendes wrecked me, and now he's wrecking my boy. Mary, I intended to forget Mendes. Oh, Bob, but... please. There's nothing you can do. Oh, yes, there is. Well... I'm going to hunt for Carlos Mendes and that rotten gang of his until I find them. Oh, no. They'll be sorry they ever heard the name Buck Adams. That night, a rough-looking man stopped in front of an old cabin located in a hidden hollow back in the hills. Oh, hey, oh. The cabin was the headquarters hideout for Carlos Mendes and his gang. There were two rooms. The back room was used by the men as a bunk room. But the main part was used by Carlos as his own quarters. Well, Jake, what is the news from down? I heard an hombre shooting his mouth off in the cafe tonight, Carlos. So? Who is this hombre? What was he saying? His name is Buck Adams. Well, Buck Adams? Yeah. So he's back from the prison, eh? What's more, he was asking a lot of questions about you and the gang. And he has found out that his son Bob is with us. I reckon he has... So far, that boy has not done anything with the gang. But now that his father is perhaps hoping to put a bullet into Carlos Mendoz and to break up the gang, it will be wise, Jake, to have the boy do a job with us. Yeah, maybe that'll make Adams stop and think twice before he pulls anything against us. Go to the door of the back room and tell Bob Adams I should like to talk with him. All right. Hey, Bob. Carlos wants to talk to you. All right, Jake, you be right out. Be right out here, Carlos. I hear him. You want to see me, Carlos? See, Bob. Sit down. Sure. Well, what's this all about? <laughs> oh, nothing in particular, Bob. You've been with us almost two months. You're only 16, of course, but you are big for your age, and you shoot and ride like a full-grown man, no? Now, look, what do you want to say to me, Carlos? I'm sleepy. It's time you did your part with the gang and shared in the profits, no? Well, yeah, I reckon so. Day after tomorrow, the bank is shipping gold on the train. Jake is finding out in town. That's right, 20000 in gold. And that's worth going after. You, Bob, will no longer stay in camp and wait for us. You will go with us to hold up that train. Gosh, Carlos, that's a big job to take me on for the first time. No, you will fit in nicely, Bob. You are quite young-looking with the so innocent expression on your face. <laughs> I shall board the train in town, and you shall go along as my son. After the train robbery, you'll be a full-fledged member of the gang and an outlaw. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
to continue. That same night, Toto, who had gone to town to try to get a line on the Mendes gang, returned to the camp where the Lone Ranger and his nephew, Dan Reed, were waiting. Oh, Scott, oh, Easy, Scott. Easy, Scott. Well, Toto, any news in town? Uh, me go to cafe. And feller Dan meet on trail. Come in. You mean Buck Adams? Uh, and him ask plenty questions about Mendo's gang. That's interesting. He must know by now about his son. That's right. Gosh, do you think Mr. Adams is going to try to join the gang? I still don't it's think... more likely that he decided to get back at Mendo's. Not what we think. Him look plenty mad. He wouldn't have a chance against them alone. What's more, Mendo's might harm his son. Do you think Bob really turned out lost, sir? That's hard to say. Toto, you try to keep an eye on Buck and trail him if he leaves town. Ah, we go back to town in the morning, and we keep watch. It was late the following day when Toto saw Buck right out of town. Mounting scout, the Indian followed at a safe distance. Maybe him get lying on gang. Now him out of sight, round bend and trail. Get him up, scout. A moment later, Toto heard a shot that came from along the trail ahead. That shot come from round bend. Get him up, scout. As Toto rounded the bend in the trail, he saw a horseman ride hurriedly from an arroyo some distance ahead and gallop away up the trail. He also saw Buck Adams lying on the trail. Oh, scout. Oh, Easy, scout. Easy. Toto stopped, attended to Buck, and put him on his horse. A short time later, Toto arrived at camp with the wounded man. Oh, oh, Father. Easy, Scott. What happened, Toto? Who have you brought here? Him, Buck Adams. Didn't get shot from ambush. Uh, masked owl hood. Maybe you two are in cahoots. Maybe he was the one. We're not outlaws, Buck. And right now is no time to explain. Tell me getting from his horse, Toto. Uh, me help. <laughs> Quickly but carefully, the Lone Ranger and Toto lifted Buck from his horse and carried him to a shaded spot where they placed him on a blanket. Then they expertly bound his wound and made him comfortable. Buck hadn't seen Dan yet, but when they had finished attending him, he raised his head and saw the boy standing nearby. Why, that boy, I know him. Yes, Mr. Adams. We met on the trail. That's right. You're Dan Reed. Yes, sir. These are my friends. Dan told us the story you told him, Buck. He believes it, and we're inclined to agree with him. What I told Dan is true, every bit of it. But it's no use you coming to meet my son now, Dan. I found out that... Uh, he... We uh, know about Bob. I'm going to find Carlos Mendes. I followed the trail of an hombre from town, and I thought I recognized one of his gang. And I got dry ghosted. Ah, uh... Jim fellow who right away from Arroyo. I got to go and try to pick up his trail again. Got to find Carlos and find Bob. Take it easy. Take it easy, Buck. <laughs> You're not strong enough to move around yet. We'll pick up the trail and try to find out where that man went. Oh. You're hunting for Carlos, too, then? Yes. He and his gang must be stopped. <laughs> Meantime, Jake, who had shot his buck from the arroyo, circled around and headed back to town by a shortcut. A short time later, he entered the sheriff's office and reported that an Indian had ambushed Buck on the trail. A short time after talking to Buck, the Lone Ranger and Toto left the camp and rode to the place where Buck had been shot. Oh, 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 oh. Here where Buck falls, he must have been. You see fellow ride from arroyo up yonder. We'll ride up there and pick up his trail, Toto. Hold it. You must count. Hold it. Hold it. Hold Look. They're placing a roy over a horse stand. All right. We'll ride down there, then follow his trail. Come, Silver, cowboy. As the two men started over the edge of the arroyo, the sheriff and his men rounded the bend in the trail. Quick, Toto, follow me. Come on, Silver. and his posse spread out and started to follow the Lone Ranger and Toto. Later, after using their knowledge gained from long experience, the Lone Ranger and Toto managed to cover their trail by devious methods and finally returned to their camp. 
The following morning, after making Buck comfortable in a secluded lean-to, the Lone Ranger with Toto and Dan Reed rode to the edge of town. The masked man waited in a grove of trees while Toto and Dan went on into Laredo. As they rode along the main street, Dan spoke. If you're going into the cafe, Toto, I think I'll go down to the station to watch the train come in. One is too soon. Uh, that's a good idea, Dan. We come there and get you and be ready to leave. You wait at the station. All right, I'll wait, Toto. See you later. Come on, Victor. A short time later, Dan stood on the platform at the railroad station. Other people had gathered, according to the custom of a small town, to watch the arrival of the daily train. Dan noticed a tall man accompanied by a nice-looking youth standing on the edge of the crowd and not far from Dan. It was Carlos Mendoz, minus his beard and side whiskers, standing with Bob Adams at his side. Dan glanced at Bob a second time, wondering where he had seen him before, since there was something familiar about his features... Carlos saw Dan's interested glance and spoke. Why you stare at my boy like that, eh? But I'm sorry. He looks like someone I know. Bob didn't speak, but he looked at Dan with an odd expression in his eyes, as though he were trying to convey a message. Then the train whistled. Sure, there's your train coming around the bend, no? Come on. We'll move close so we get a seat in the passenger coach. As the man and youth started past Dan, he felt a hand touch his. Dan looked down and saw a piece of paper in Bob's hand. Instinctively, he took it, and the two moved away toward the tracks. I got a fellow slipped a note into my hand. Go to Sheriff. Carlos gang to hold up train in the canyon five miles from town. Carlos will be on the train with me. Bob Adams. Bob Adams. That's why I thought I recognized him. That must be Carlos with him. Quickly, Dan showed the note to Toto and told about the two people he'd seen getting on the train. Toto thought quickly. You take note to Sheriff Dan and hurry. We go tell Lone Ranger. Toto hurried to the edge of town and quickly told the Lone Ranger of the situation. Good work, Toto. Dan will get the sheriff. The posse can reach the canyon by a shortcut before the train gets there. Uh. And what we do? Bob Adams is in danger. And so are the other passengers on that train. We will cut across the prairie and try to head off the train. It makes a big circle around the hills. We have to get aboard before it reaches the canyon. Right, easy, 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 and Bob Adams sat side by side in the back seat. Carlos spoke in low tones to his young companion. And in it, Bob, we should be at the canyon junction. If the train stops, we shall stand up and have our guns right. Savvy? Yeah, yeah, I get it. I shall be watching you, too, so don't try anything funny. The train is stopping at the canyon now. the train break to a stop, Carlos stood up with Bob beside him. The outlaw leader spoke out. Reach, all of you. We have two guns back here ready to shoot. Hey, what goes on? You can't do that. This is a hold-up. Please. You are wise. You use a bullet to quiet you, amigo. No, you won't. There's another one back in the doorway. Yeah, he's mad. Bob, watch Carlos. Give him cover. Calm down, all of you. 
You won't be harmed or robbed. The masked man saved me from a bullet. He can't be one of them. I'm not. Look out the windows. You see where the posse is fighting the outlaws. Then that boy, he did go to the shed. Yes. But you, I don't understand. You will later, Bob. We'll take Carlos out and turn him over to the sheriff now. Come on. The fight is over. The Lone Ranger with Bob and the conductor took Carlos off the passenger car and turned him over to the sheriff. At first, the Lone Ranger's mask was questioned, but after showing a silver bullet and with the testimony of the conductor and Bob, the sheriff and his men were convinced he was not an outlaw. Later, after being joined by Toto with the horses, the Lone Ranger took Bob with them to their camp. Oh, no. Easy, 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 easy. Yeah, at least Jake, one of the outlaws, brought my horse along. But tell me, why'd you bring me here? Come over to that lean-to and you'll get your answer. All right. Hey. Hey, that man. Where's well, Dan? Bob. Bob, my boy. They brought you back. So that means they found you in... No, Buck. Bob is the one who turned the tables on Carlos and his gang. What? He slipped a note to Dan at the railroad station. Well, then... Then you aren't one of them. Oh, no, Dad. I, I joined the gang to get even for what they did to you. I was just waiting my chance. Son, this is a mighty happy moment in my life. Your ma will be mighty proud. But Tom and I are going to town to find Dan. We'll see that Mrs. Adams comes out, too. Bob will look after you until we get back. Come on, fellow. Uh-huh. Gosh, Dad, he's great. If it hadn't have been for him, what? I... Tell me, Dad, who is that masked man? Why, the Indian Tonto told me. You see, son, he's the Lone Ranger. of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of The Lone Ranger is...